What were you doing before cancer entered your life? Before you set up the, this cancer uh, center? It has never been my mission or my dream to say that I would be involved in cancer in the first place. Actually, my interest has always been on plants. You see, I'm a plant man and uh, I grow flowers, I grow vegetables, and uh, I write flowers, I write about, you know, agriculture. Because I'm basically an agriculturist. As uh, we grow older, our outlook of life, our way of thinking about life changes for a while. Well, I have been in the university for, uh, the, uh, serving the university for the last 26 years. Penang. In Indian University of Science in Penang. I have written research papers, I have written articles, I have written books. But what does it all mean? Most of the time the papers are left in the library shelf, nobody reads them, and it affects nobody. So one day, while I was driving to my farm in the evening, I went to my farm every evening virtually. And what do we do? We grow flowers and we grow vegetables. Then I just pray, simply, just as one sentence pray. And I asked God, with the knowledge that I have in my head, now shall tell me, how do I serve mankind? I mean, what's, what do I do now? Well, as we say, if you do it, sincerely, if it's a sincere prayer, you will get an answer. And an answer came in a very amazing way. He said, some days later, somebody came to my house and just said, hey, without an appointment, you know, and he said, hey, do you know how to propagate this plant? I was a tissue culturist. I could produce millions of plants without any problem in the laboratory. And in fact, I was one of the men for this in this country. And I was more interested in making money. I said, hey, how, how much money can I make out of this deal? <laughs> but it didn't turn out to be that way. Well, I grew the plant, I propagated it. I asked myself, now, what do I do with this plant? You know, I can't just simply give to people and they, they are dead after that. And then what do I do? He told you why he wanted you to propagate this yes, plant? Yes, he said it is a plant used for cancer treatment. What is this plant? Oh, this is called a rodent tuber. The rodent tuber is actually a, a yam plant which has a tuber. Right. And uh, why it is called a rodent? Because the flower looks like a, a little mouse. Oh, I see. Yeah, so it has a mouse with a long tail. Okay. So that's called rodent tuber. So it's the tuber itself? Is yeah, the tuber itself, the leaf itself, uh, could be used for, for, for cancer. When I started growing the plant, there was no, no takers, for, so to say. But I happened to meet a printer, and at that time I was writing a book on botanical garden for the government. So I did mention that I was growing this plant and it was meant for cancer. So a week later, he came to my farm in the evening. This is about 7 o'clock, 8 in the evening. Hey, he said, my friend is down with liver cancer and uh, give me your plant. He wants to take it. So I gave him the plant. No charge. <laughs> and then uh, the peculiar part of this, uh, is that uh, he brought the plant to the hospital and they were pounding the plant in the hospital and feeding him. So they agreed to do that? Yeah. Yes. And then uh, a week later, even the doctor was amazed about the result. He said, fantastic. Go and take some more crystal grass, he said. Go ahead. So actually the patient after that was discharged, came to see me. So it's, it's amazing that it, it did harm cancer patient, all right? And then uh, this is a written of liver cancer case, so that's really there's no nothing to lose by taking the herbs. But anyway, it did create some excitement 
for me as well. well. What about the doctors? I'm now first oh, yes. of all, I'm surprised that they would agree to use... Uh, no, they didn't ask for permission. Because the doctor couldn't do anything, but they were lying in the hospital. Oh, I see. So they themselves... Yes, made the, the patient themselves make the decision. The doctor himself was so amazed that he said, get Crystal to call me. So I call up the doctor and we talk. And he did not object to it. He said, hey, fantastic. Go and take some more Christos herb. Right. Uh, Christos grass. They don't call it herb. Christos grass. Christos grass. Yes. <laughs> what is more amazing to me is that the person who took these herbs, or uh, this, this, this plant, was one person that would never believe in herbal medicine. Right. This is according to the wife. He said, my husband would never entertain that idea. But somehow, that evening, when the friend came and said, this is Christel's plan, he agreed. The man took the herb, and he survived for more than one and a half years with liver cancer. With terminal liver cancer? Terminal liver cancer, which the doctor said would not even last six months. Right. You know, and uh, even the doctors admitted, he must be upstairs that's helping him, you see. Right. So, that's the start. That's a start. And uh, that got me excited about the whole thing. And let me just admit to you, I knew nothing. My knowledge of cancer was absolutely zero. Nil. <laughs> I'm more of an expert in plant, but not on cancer. Right. But from that day onward, I begin to learn, educate myself, and I read hundreds and hundreds of books on cancer. So that is the beginning. Right. Okay.